So we are going to cover some basic physics of light first so that we can understand the next several lessons more easily. And we're going to start with ND and K. So here's ND, there's K. And these are our two parameters that we're primarily concerned with here. The maximum speed of light is measured by how fast it travels in a perfect vacuum. But as soon as light travels through anything else, it slows down. And the denser the material, the more it'll slow down. This change of speed causes the light to bend, which is known as refraction. The index of refraction numerically describes the amount the light will bend as it goes from vacuum into the material that we are working with. Vacuum is assigned a refraction index of 1, and all other materials have a larger index of refraction. The index of refraction is commonly denoted as N, and this is the capital N in ND. So what is the D in ND? Well, since light rays of differing wavelengths are not refracted equally and are bent to slightly different angles, there has to be a number for exactly what wavelength you are measuring when deciding the refractive index of a material. The D in ND means that we are using 589.29 nanometers. And that's the wavelength that was set in Maxwell to determine the refraction index of a material. So when you are looking up an ND for a material, make sure to specify 589.29 nanometers. In solid objects, ND is mostly about controlling the strength of reflections and defining the Fresnel effect. The Fresnel effect mathematically describes the differences in the strength of reflections between 0 and 90 degree surfaces. And there often is a difference. Just observe everyday objects closely, and you'll see that reflections are usually much stronger at the 90 degree edges and weaker on the zero degree surfaces which are directly facing you. The Fresnel effect is normally calculated in Maxwell using the ND, this guy right here, in conjunction with the reflectance zero and reflectance 90 values. Together, this creates what is known as a custom IOR, which we can see right here is what we have. Now, the IOR stands for Index of Refraction. The higher the IOR, the less we see the Fresnel effect because the object becomes equally reflective at all angles. The power of the Fresnel effect is most obvious at roughness zero, which is the reason why I set roughness zero down here and it will slowly lose influence as the surface becomes rougher. Well, reflections don't matter when you get higher roughness, so that'll be pretty obvious as we continue on here. The more roughness means the given reflectance 0 and 90 colors will start to dominate more, and ND will have less effect until we get to Lambert mode, which is roughness 100, at which point ND has no effect. For most solid objects, an ND of 3 is a good starting point. Also, measurements of refraction really consist of two parts. One is the refractive index, which we've already looked at, the ND value. But the other tells how much electromagnetic radiation is absorbed by the material. This absorption value is called the extinction coefficient, and it's represented by a K. That's this value right here. For many objects, there is hardly any visible light absorbed, and this K value can be ignored. But for metals, it can't be ignored without creating unrealistic artifacts. Luckily, you can get the K values at the same time you are looking up the ND values. Just make sure to specify 589.29 nanometers. So let's see all this in action. I've created some material libraries that you can download in the user files. The first one here under 0204 ND and K would be part one index of refraction. And I've created a render to show all these materials side by side. So let's go to Photoshop and we'll take a look. So the first one here is ND of 1.001. .001. Well, that's air because we can't do vacuum. That would just be black. But you'll notice here that 
even with air with this 1.001, we get a very dark material. And as we increase our ND values, there we go, you'll see that things gradually get brighter and brighter and more and more shiny. So even though we're dealing with a material here that has all the exact same properties, just by increasing the ND or decreasing the ND, we can control the overall brightness and shininess of the material. So let's go ahead and look at the next set here. We'll go back over here. And this next one shows the extinction coefficient. So we'll look at that render. There we go. So you can see here that now we have ND as the value of three for all of these, but now we have a K value also. Before, if we don't put in a K value, it'll stay at the default of zero. But here we have a K of one, a K of two, a K of three, and a K of four. And what you should notice is that even though the ND is at three and the roughness is staying consistent at five, we're getting brighter and brighter. And things are becoming a little bit cleaner looking in terms of more metallic. And that has to do with the K value. Now, what I would say about K value is that you can do some things with K where you're kind of guessing at values and you're gonna end up with something that looks okay. But if you have precise K values, and these K values were taken from uh, looked up numbers for gold at 589.29 nanometers. So this is the same setting over here of roughness five with an ND of 30. And you can see here that this ND of 30 is kind of similar to this ND of three with a K5 and kind of similar to this ND of 0.29 and K of 2.69. Why am I pointing that out to you? Because there's more than one way to skin a cat, but if you want absolutely physically correct materials, you're gonna wanna use the ND and K values for real world metals as much as possible. And one of the places that you're really gonna see the difference is in the edges. You know, the 90 degree edges of the objects are gonna look cleaner. So let's go ahead and look at this last batch of materials here. So let me just go back over here. And these would be the wizard metals. So you can access the wizard metals and I'll just go ahead and go over here, wizards, metal, and you can see here we have aluminum all the way down, and then you just specify what you want. So here I've chosen a roughness of 25. So let's go ahead and take a look at that render so you can see the wizard metals in action. And the important thing to know about the wizard metals is they all have correct ND and K values so that they will be the most realistic that you can get those particular metals. Now, I could have rendered this to a higher sampling level, but I basically just didn't have the time to. I had to move on and do a bunch of render series you'll see over the next few lessons. So I just got it to the point where I thought it was reasonable. This is aluminum, chromium, cobalt, copper, germanium, gold, iron, nickel, silver, titanium, and vanadium. Don't even know what vanadium is, but there it is. It's in the wizard. So the point being is you don't have to look up those metals. They're already there. They're in your wizard. You've got the proper ND and K values for them. And oftentimes what I'll do is I'll use one of those metals as a starting point for some imaginary metal that I'm going to create that might have a different color or a different look. So Obviously, having those wizard medals is very useful. And of course, you can go to the websites that I talked about before and look up the ND and K values for virtually any type of material that they have measurements for.